Bill Pito along with Wally Zerbiak, Alan Hahn from his home studio. So, Alan, very similar to night one for the Knicks, very competitive in the first half, not so much in the second half. Yeah, the, well, the, the issue really is more that this looked a lot more like last year's team, which was the struggle of backcourt scoring, 2 for 22 from your starting backcourt, 0 for 9 from 3 from those two, including Alfred Payton and R.J. Barrett. And as much as R.J. played so well in the preseason and so well in the first half of the season opener, that was scary, a scary night for him. But the good news was how hard he kept playing everywhere else and made the free throw line. So hope that this is just an isolated incident for him and he'll find that shot he's worked so hard on again. But the reminder of last season came tonight with the poor shooting from outside. And Wally, as you know, you can't win in this league if you can't make the three-point shot. No, and especially against a veteran team and a really deep team in the Philadelphia 76ers. This team looks very focused, and Doc Rivers has them ready to go. Uh, they know their roles. They're playing for each other. And, uh, you know, the Knicks had a couple guys that stepped up, had good games, and Julius Randle and Alec Burks. But in order to compete with the Sixers team that is – maybe one of the tops in the East, top two or three uh, at least. Uh, you have to have all guys playing well, not just two guys. And right now the point guard position is a big, big problem because the point guards are supposed to make the game easier for everyone. Alec Burks, when you call plays for him, he can score. Julius Randle, he's a guy who can create matchup problems. He can score. He took advantage of Tobias Harris. He was a little bigger and stronger, so he was able to get going in that first half. But the point guard needs to make the game easier for everyone else. And right now, the Knicks don't have point guards that are doing that for the other guys who need a little help in order to get into a rhythm and get good shots at the basket. Nick starter point guard guys Alfred Payton 0 for 6 with only one assist. Of course, Emmanuel quickly out with a hip pointer. He's day to day. And by the way, Obi Toppin out with a bad yep. calf. Nick say he'll be reevaluated in seven to ten days. So maybe he's going to be out even longer than that. Alan, the game really turned in the third quarter. Knicks were only down by five at the half, but Philly in the third quarter outscored the Knicks 26 to 14. Yeah, and to talk about things that are coming back from the past, those third quarter of dooms are starting to become a trend here in this new season, and you don't like that. It was a fairly competitive first half for the most part. This third quarter, though, things got ugly, and Seth Curry was in the middle of everything, knocking down shots, and, boy, he looked terrific on this team. What a good addition he's been, a guy that can shoot from the outside. There's one three that made it 68-59. How about another one to make it 73-62? As I mentioned, it three ball changes the game. He hits two there. And then Joel Embiid was getting it done inside on the offensive boards, just a dominant physical player, and he was in this game. Didn't really seem to break a sweat. And a three ball again, the kick out. Look at the ball movement here, the nice passing. And Danny Green from Long Island knocks it from 5-1-6 and hits that shot for the, for the Sixers. And again, the three ball is everything. And the Sixers were a team that used to be maligned for not having enough shooters around Ben Simmons. But you added Danny Green, you added Seth Curry, and you've got guys that can now spread the floor for them. Wally, Knicks from downtown, only 8 of 29. Yeah, that's a problem. And Alec Burks and uh, Julius Randle were the only ones to be able to get those threes to go down. And Long Island's 6-3-1. Come on, Han. It's no longer 5-1-6. Nassau so County, that Sonny. What are you talking about? Times. It went to St. Mary's. That's 5-1-6, <laughs> oh, Manhattan. No, it's all you don't think I know my area codes. <laughs> the further out you go, it's 5-1-6 <laughs> until, like, the middle of the island. Right, Wally? You're uh, so well, far he out went, there. He went to St. Mary's in Manhattan. Two, two that Long is Island guys were really good on the MSG floor tonight. They get motivated to play at the Garden. Believe me, they do. And Tobias Harris and Danny Green are carrying the torch Long Island strong. All right, bright spot for the Knicks. Julius Randle, uh, Wally playing excellent basketball. We talked about it in the pregame. He's not forcing things. No. He's taking what has been presented to him. And tonight, 11 of 15 from the floor for yeah. 25 points. Yeah, and he came out right at the beginning of the game, and he was absolutely dominating his matchup. And he was making really good decisions passing the ball, too. And that's what's so impressive about how he's come into this season ready to go. Uh, he was in great shape for training camp. Tom Thibodeau alluded to it. I like the way he handles the ball in the secondary break. Sets that pick for R.J. Barrett, then he flares out to the outside, you know, gets his kind of feet set, gets that open three. I love when he shoots threes from the corner because he has range to about 21, uh, 22 feet. When he has to go out to the top of the key where it's 23-9, I think that's a little bit too far of a shot for him and his percentages go down. When he knocks down that three, though, his game completely comes full circle because he can do everything else. Here they kind of bring him off the ball, creates a matchup 
issue with uh, Tobias Harris, little mouse in the house action. He's so much stronger than Harris. That's how he can get that shot up. That's a tough looking fadeaway right there, uh, falling out of bounds. But he knocks that one down. That was a phenomenal game by Julius Randle, and it's gonna get. It's got to be tough for him. You know, to have that type of performance, to get, you know, he, you could see he was getting a little frustrated in the second half because he wasn't getting much help out there. Hopefully the Knicks can uh, get one of these wins here coming up soon in order just to get that feeling of winning like they had in the preseason. Alan, you know, Wally, it, it, it's, uh, you're so right about Julius Randle as far as his conditioning. He's in much better shape than he was last year. But what we've learned as we've gotten to know him as a player is less is more. And I don't mean less of him with the ball. I mean less of him doing a lot of things with it. Just be the score. When you see that they have the point guard issues that they have right now, they don't have an organizer out there, you saw Julius Randle trying to do too much. He's a really good passer when it's in rhythm. But when you're asking him now to start organizing and set players up and all that stuff, I think he gets out of his game and he starts to force, and that's where the frustration comes in. But he looked terrific out of the gate the start of this game. Randall and Alec Burks combined for 47 points. Guys, the rest of the team combined for 42. I got the math right. You total up for 89. A 109-89 loss to the Sixers.